they hire you and they say, you're going to be the face of this station. You're like, this is radio. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a couple questions. And by the way, if you have any questions at all, 321-282-1055. Or again, you can interact with us right away live at ATTY, Justin Clark on Facebook. And we will answer your questions live right here on the air. So number one is, and this is very ironic, right? So the founder of the Me Too movement, Asia Argento, okay. now being accused of having sexual relations with Allegedly. a young man Allegedly. a young man at, at age 17 at the Ritz Carlton in Hollywood under age what do you think about it? i mean this, this is the, one of the more ironic stories you've heard in a long time right guys i mean what do you think about this Mick? Yeah. I, I want to hear you honest opinion yeah, I, I don't know that's crazy this is there's no limit to it what happened this is the founder of the me too Mo look i fully believe the me too movement has been fantastic i mean we've exposed people this has been great but still, but now we have pictures of them, of them, of them nude together when he was yes, oh, I know that. Oh, I when he was that. seventeen years old, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I mean, I, I just I can't really. You can't dispute a picture. Of that, I can't. But, I guess. No, okay. It, it wasn't showing them doing anything. It was a picture of them sort of like from nude up from here, mm -hmm. laying in bed when he was seventeen years old. What do you think? I mean, th this is what that is. And, and I think yeah. that guy, what, what was the guy's name? The Weinstein? Or yeah. What? I mean, the, the, he, was a, he was a total, the, total the ass. Sexter. We get that. I mean, just a total <laughs> horrible person. Yeah. But I mean, she is the one that literally was accusing him of doing all of this, and now this. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's very good for the movie. And another thing going on locally, of course, is Wally's. I, I know I saw you it's shedding terrible. a tear yesterday, it's Allie Mack. Wally's shutting down. Mm -hmm. What's going on with this, Allie Mack? Not really sure. The social media says that they actually put a sign outside the front door while gas while patrons were in there in the morning. Did they get to finish their beer though? I, I sure hope so. Yeah, I wish I would have been in there. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to drive over there. I'm right around the corner, but it was sad. But last night they actually posted where people were leaving flowers and candles. <laughs> Just, so, yeah, which, which is a little much, not, but still. It's a little bit, but you know, I hope they bring it back. Well, you, I know hope that, they... you know that almost, I think it's about a dozen people were left homeless when Wally's closed. <laughs> <laughs> and for my next yeah, joke, he's, he's been preparing this all day, ladies and gentlemen. I have, I have. I've been preparing this I all day. I used it on the air, you too. Knew. <laughs> you knew what was coming for that. It's a wonderful world, Justin. So when I, when I first moved to downtown Orlando, I'll tell you my Wally story. When I first moved downtown Orlando, there are no liquor stores in downtown Orlando. Yeah. I mean, and in fact, I think there still are no liquor stores. And then the only place you can go is at Wally's. And you walk into Wally's, it's a full-blown liquor store, but the size of like my coffee cup here. I mean, it's yeah. a small, small, small Not place. Like this. Very small. And let me tell you, you smell like cigarette smoke the moment you walk by Wally's. I mean, it's a tight, friendly confines type quarters, but what an amazing place. I mean, what an amazing place. And, uh, you know, John Morgan, if you're listening, uh, buddy, I know, we're calling on you again Save to buy this. We're, we're calling on you again to he buy. He mentioned in a tweet uh, today, though, that it, it is, the lot is kind of small. He's very right. I mean, it's not a great business decision. He's okay. saying, like, look, I just have enough money that, what do I care? I bet I would think that they want to just redevelop the block like they do everywhere else. <laughs> I mean, you can only have so many Vietnamese restaurants in one block. Really you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you can I mean, only have... How many followers do you have? Can we do, like, a GoFundMe? I mean, I guess we could. GoFundMe? <laughs> Save Wally's. Well, no, let's just Save leave that to John. Wally's. Morgan will do that. We would be remiss also if we didn't talk about what happened yesterday. When we were live on the program, uh, a couple of guilty verdicts. We, we took mm -hmm. bets, I think, and uh, I said I said a mistrial all the way. You guys said guilty. Manafort. And we were right. There was, yeah. I mean, Manafort guilty on... What was it? Eight, eight, eight counts, counts. Yeah. and then a uh, hung another, jury is on ten. ten. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. I mean, once you're guilty on one, you're you're doing some time. And then as that was going on, Cohen pleads guilty. I mean, something's going on here. What do you think it is? Do you have any sort of like idea what's really going on here? I've lost track since Trump was elected. <laughs> you know, I just I don't know. Something. There's All no way. Right. There's no way it's a coincidence that. He is found guilty and Cohen pleads guilty at the same time. There's no way this is a coincidence. I see a collusion happening. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wait, Russia? Oh, please. I'll leave conspiracy it's, to you three. <laughs> I don't think I don't think really Russia did it, but uh, <laughs> no. right, what else have I missed in the news, Ali Mac? I know we're gonna have a, the Ali Mac news segment soon. Did I miss anything? 
Or is um, that pretty much it? Wally's is, you know, obviously number one. I think that was the big story. Orchard Supply Hardware. Tell, talk to me. Shutting down. Oh. Isn't that new up, place? The, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's not been there that long. What happened? That, well, I guess they just decided to restructure, and they're, you know, it's, it's owned by Lowe's. So there's wow. 99 stores nationwide, two in Orlando and one under construction. What is going to happen to a fashion square? Well, here's the problem. It's a major I mean, tenant, and they're building it, and it's gone. We are, I mean, we're in the, the prime of construction. We're in a construction boom. Mm -hmm. So they can't even survive during this time? Yeah. So I mean, there's a real there. problem. Yeah. Real problem. All right, we want to welcome, first of all, Ali Mack is here. The beautiful Brianna is behind the scenes, making sure that you can see us on Facebook and all social media platforms. The Orlando radio legend, Mick Dolan, joins us as always. We have a special guest today. His name is Samuel Rita. Sam? Nailed it. Do I call you Sam or Sammy? What, what, what? Anything but late for dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a gotcha. lawyer with a sense of humor. Love yeah. it. So, so you actually work uh, at a firm that I know. I know, I know your boy Roman. Great guy, fantastic guy. How long have you been there? I have been with Roman since the middle of June. Okay. <laughs> nice guy. You like him, or right? look, no one's listening. It's just the five he, of us. Do we like him? He's okay. Like, on a scale of one to ten, he's a great ten. guy. Eleven. <laughs> he's an eleven. There you go. Yeah. So, what what kind of work do you guys do over there? We do bankruptcy and business litigation. So, let me ask you a question. I mean, th this is what you know everyone asks. I, I'm a lawyer as well, as you probably know. Uh, so this bar exam that you have to take to actually start practicing law, is it really that hard or is this sort of a myth? What do you think? I would love to represent Orchard in their bankruptcy, uh, <laughs> whatever's going on. No, but really, uh, the, the bar exam is a totally different animal in my opinion. Please elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, because you spend months studying for one test that has multiple parts. And mm -hmm. It's not like any other exam. I mean, maybe there's a law school class that only has a final. But the bar exam is just, there's so many subjects, there's so much, you know, nuances with all the different types of law, ones you're probably never going to see again, and I just, I, it's a different animal. Is there, are there any fooler questions on the, on the test? You know what I mean? <laughs> there he is, knows what I mean. It's, it's a whole test of fooler <laughs> questions. <laughs> One of those kind. Okay. Right, let me ask you this question, and this is something I think about all the time as well. I've been practicing law. 15 years now, Mick, if you can believe that. Um, and I wonder, all right, so am I happy that I decided to go the law school, be a lawyer route? Am I happy that I did that? It's a question that, that I don't necessarily have the answer to myself. What do you think? When you, when you talk to someone who's a sophomore in college and they say, should I go to law school, what's your answer? Other than meeting my wife? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that important. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, uh, if anybody asks, that's what I, that's my honest yeah. response to everybody. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no. I don't. I, I don't think you should. So, so here's the deal. You guys don't know this about me. So, I've had a lot of uh, people who are in college. They're interning for me, right? And they're like, well, Justin, I want to be a lawyer. I want to go to law school. I'm like, here's what you should do. Think about this. Go to optometry school because all you have to do is say, all right, cover this eye, like this, <laughs> and then write some <laughs> some letters on the board. Even if they get them right, just say they didn't get them right, you can sell them some glasses, right? Optometry, I think, is the way to go, right? As opposed to law. I think if anybody asked me uh, if it was a male, I would say, learn how to punt a football, right? <laughs> like, like, all you got to do is kick a ball as far as possible into a corner and not out of bounds. And, and you, you don't get, get hurt. And you don't get hurt. You get lit up once every 10 practices when yeah. people decide they don't want to block you. I'd say be a punter. And if, if you're a woman, um, well, <laughs> be a punter. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Equal right, opportunity, but, right? right. But, exactly. Th there are people listening right now who are either thinking about going to law school or they have children who are, are thinking about going to law school, and you have to take a, a little test before you go to law school. What's that test called? The LSAT. The L-S-A-T, ladies and gentlemen, the LSAT. Describe that test for me. The law school admissions test. What was it like? It was way easier than the bar exam. <laughs> really? Yeah. But no, no, it, it, in all seriousness, it has four sections. There's uh, reading comprehension. You might have to help me out here. It's been right. many years since I've taken it. Reading comprehension, and then there's uh, these logic games, which were a real pain in the behind, for me at least. And then 
there was a shorter reading comprehension, and then there was more reading comprehension, <laughs> and then more logic games, and oh, and it's all, all this is timed, by the way, so you only get like whatever it is, 30 or 45 minutes per section, so it's, it's a, uh, still easier than the bar exam. So here's my time. feeling on this thing, because I took it too, obviously. So you go to this test, right, and you're, you're trying to go to law school, you're like, oh, great. So we're gonna talk about law stuff. This test says, trains A, B, C, and D, go to the station at 5 p.m. Train D leaves at 4 p.m. What time does train A arrive? I'm like, what wow. in the hell does it have to do with law, period? I have no earthly idea. I mean, this is the dumbest test in the world. It didn't help that I didn't really study for it or anything. I think I you know, might have some buds before the, the night before as well. What do you mean by buds? <laughs> Mick Dolan knows what I'm talking about. This is Bud Daddy for a while. Well, yeah, but there's Speak, other buds, too. Speaking of Samuel, Rita, we're going to talk more about bankruptcy and about commercial law. So. If you have any interest in going to law school someday, or even if your business has had some legal issues, we're going to ask him those difficult questions right on the other side of this break. My name is Justin Clark, Behind the Law, Bud 94.1. I thought your last name was Retta. No, you've been pronouncing it wrong. Why didn't you ever tell me? What? Rita. You never, you never said anything. Yeah, because yeah, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Do you want a pitch, you awesome. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you you got to correct them yeah. on every turn. <laughs> yeah, let us know, man. We're just having fun. They will get your name wrong. I love having fun. <laughs> fun is good. He nailed it, though. Fun is good. He did. Yeah, but it's... <clears throat> what? So what next? Exactly. <laughs> Justin's going... I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the law thing. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Are you guys ready? You, you're not going to just talk lawyer with no, 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 no. But I want you guys to chime in, please. This is interesting to me. I don't want you guys falling asleep, of course. I hope I don't get peppered with the real questions. <laughs> no, no, real questions. Just consider yourself on trial. Just now. yeah, just call me your honor. And Objection. Everything will be fine. Your honor. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Yes. Welcome back to the program. My name is Justin Clark. Another edition of Behind the Law with me, Ali Mack, Mick Dolan, the beautiful Brianna's here. We're talking to Samuel. Rita. Alright, what do we call you? Is it Sam, Samuel? Just Sam. Anything, but, anything but late for dinner. We're I know, but, but seriously, I, we, we want the okay, honest you, 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 oh, The only people who have ever called Rita. me. What's up, Rita? That's what my friends in high school Rita. called me. Rita. That's fine. Hey, Rita, how are you? But everyone else calls me Sam. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Sarasota, Florida. Alright, so you're like a full-blown Florida guy. What's your background? Rita, is that uh, American? Italian? <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's a, it's Italian. My dad's parents came over through Ellis Island. They uh -huh. messed up our last name. My dad's, my great grandpa, his last name was Reedy, R E D I, and then they got to Ellis Island. They gave us R E D A, and they were like, "Thank you very much. We love our new last name." <laughs> Have heard of it? Easy. Yeah. It's an e easy peasy name. Yeah, yeah. You got it. All right, Mr. Rita. What's Sam up? is good. Sam, what's going on, man? So, a lot of people get mad at lawyers, of course. It's the billable hours thing, right? So, how does it really work? When someone hires you, do they have to come in and actually you know, stroke you a big check, and then you're really gonna charge them for every time you, you check an email, point two. I mean, how does this really work, hourly billing? Well, what you described is pretty close, so. Well, tell us yeah. how it really well, works. We, we well, want to Depending on the complexity of the case, you get a, a retainer that usually, if it's a business litigation case, it ranges between you know, $2,500 and $5,000, depending on the amount at issue. Then after that, it's, as you explained, every time you work on, a on, work on the file, draft documents, go through depositions, review discovery responses, you get billed by every six minutes, point one. What do you guys think about that? I mean, as non-lawyers who have had, probably had to hire a lawyer before in your life, I mean, do you like that? Do you like that you get a bill every month saying, check your email, point two? Well, what do you think? You tell us ahead of time, right? As yeah. far as like... It's not a secret. <laughs> yeah, it's not... A, well, no, no, no. I mean, you, you, the whole goal it's is to... Corporate law? Business litigation. Business so, litigation. yeah, on all, all kinds of issues um, from breaches of contracts to reviews for contracts before they enter into uh, an agreement with a different, you know, business or to fulfill supplies, whatever it is, right. all kinds of different stuff. But no, you try and be on, on the same page with your client. You try to keep your client informed, you know, sometimes you just want to reach out and say, hey, this is where we are in the case. This is, you know, approximately the time I'm done. You know, you, if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to discuss it with you. Please let me know. Is that chargeable there, that conversation? 
I'll give you the lawyer answer. It depends on who you ask. <laughs> let me ask you a question. This is for Mick Dolan. Mick, hey, Mick. So let, let's say that you have a dog at your house, right? And you love your dog. He, in fact, he's a service animal. And your homeowners association has a rule that says, well, you can only have dogs 30 pounds or less. Your dog is 35 pounds. And your HOA says, look, I'm going to start fining you every day until you get rid of this dog. Or you can go hire a lawyer to try to fight for me. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to cost you? I mean, what, what, what is your trepidation of, into hiring a lawyer there? Well, first of all, I changed my scale. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> great, right? I mean, really? You know, off a couple of pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I don't know. I, right? I, I hope I never have to figure that out. But I, I, I don't know. I've heard scare stories about lawyers and how much they charge. And, you know, a couple hundred bucks at least, I would think. But, so what makes you, Allie Mack, this is for you, I mean, what makes you nervous about going to hire a lawyer? Is it that it could cost me thousands and thousands of dollars? Or what, what's I, the, the real problem with that? I think what probably makes me nervous is not hiring an attorney for a specific, um, um, for a specific issue that I'm having and me trying to do it on my own and me not getting the right result or me not being able to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. So. For me, that's actually what scares me more, not getting the legal advice that I needed to and then not proceeding with, you know, from a legal standpoint, from what the attorney's, you know, telling me that I should. Yeah. Samuel Reed, tell me again what you guys do exactly and how do I reach out to you if I have any issues? We do bankruptcy, uh, sevens and elevens, and, or, yeah, sevens and elevens, and we do business litigation. We love representing and helping small businesses, whatever their issues are. Um, lawyers turn other people's chaos into organizations, so we definitely try and do that for our small business clients. You can call me at the office anytime, 407-650-0003, or you can email me, sam at romanvhamus.com, H-A-M-M-E-S is the last name. And let's talk about business bankruptcy a little bit, because it, we talk about uh, bankruptcy for consumers all the time. You know, you have a lot of credit card debt, you want to wipe out Amex, boom easy. But with a business bankruptcy, it's a little bit different, right? What chapter bankruptcy do businesses have to file when they're struggling? Uh, depends on the size of the 13. Okay. So, so a business normally files a 13? Okay. What about a chapter 11? What's a chapter 11? Chapter 11 is a reorganization of debts. Okay. And describe how an 11 really works, because an 11 is more of a complicated process for businesses, right? Yeah, that, in an 11, you basically reorganize your debt and you end up paying one payment for all the debts you owe to the trustee, and then they distribute the payments amongst the debtors. As a business owner, say if I were to file bankruptcy on my business, does it also affect my personal credit? It depends. No, oh, that's the typical lawyer answer. It depends. Please, you know, you do know, elaborate, Rita. You, Let's go. You know the the valedictorian in my law school class said that was you, right? No, oh. absolutely not. But I'm still a sharp guy. Jamie. Was, was like, actually, Jamie graduated in a different class. Oh. That's my life. So the the guy, my valedictorian in, in our class, he comes to this. He comes to the podium. He gives this whole elaborate speech. Blah blah. Law school this. Law school that. And he said. For $100,000, I learned the answer, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me a little bit no, about, uh, talk to us a little bit about law school debt too. So a lot of our listeners are, are going through this phase, like should I go back to law school? You know, I've been through all this stuff. I feel like I'm already a lawyer as is. Maybe I want to actually go back and get my degree. What does it really cost and how long does law school really last? Well, I went to a private law school, so my tuition was- What was it called? Barry University, uh, uncle, uh, uh, also known as the Harvard of Orlando. That's right. Yep. <laughs> so, cost, time, time, what is it? Tuition, oh, well, time is a full, it's a, the same as a full-time job, uh, especially your first year, and then studying for the bar is more than a full-time job. They say you get worked to death your first year, and please disagree with me if you do. If, if any of this disagrees, right. please do. Second year, you get scared to death, and the third year, you get bored to death. So, that's... They, there's also a rumor, and you guys might not know this, but A students become uh, teachers, professors. B students become judges. C students become rich. 
Oh. Well, I'm a, was a C student, but I'm not an so hopefully, sure. hopefully I'm trending in that direction. That's what you should say. I mean, I was never Why a... Why is that? Why is it so... Because, like, an A student is all focused on book, 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 book. They're right? academics. Academics. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now teach the, the next round of lawyers coming up. B students are pretty smart. They, they looked at the books a little bit. Uh, not you know not all the way so they're gonna be judges they know the law a little bit c students i'm thinking about marketing man i'm fi- I'm trying to figure out how i'm gonna get on facebook oh, and get okay. people to come to my firm right? like what we're doing right now yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's figured it out that, that's why we have a radio station in the law firm i guess this is what you would say uh the most challenging part of law school for you was what hmm. go, go ahead did you go to class <laughs> You, at, Barry, at Barry, they make you go to class, so that wasn't an option. So, that's a tough question, man. Well, let me tell you my biggest challenge. So my biggest challenge, I wasn't a great student. I skated by I graduated high school with a 2.6 GPA. I had a lot of girlfriends. I played a lot of basketball. 2.6 GPA. The fact that I got into the University of Tennessee is an absolute miracle. Miracle! Right now, there's no way I could even have gotten into the University of Tennessee. First semester of University of Tennessee, 1.7. Academic probation. <laughs> A lot of beer pong. Uh-oh. A lot of beer pong. Which we don't promote. And then I was like, you know Stay what? <laughs> I grew up pretty Stay poor, and I don't want to be poor. Oh, I guess yes. I'm going to have to like figure out how to skate by. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start buying the books. <laughs> That's what I did. I didn't buy the books at first. So I, did, I figured out how to sort of skate by. I graduated college, maybe a 3.0 or something, 2.8, not great. And got into the New England School of Law, Boston, Mass., across the river from Harvard, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. I went back to my old ways. I'm not buying these books. I can just figure this out myself. Didn't buy books at all. Academic probation, first semester. And I was like, ah, I guess I gotta... Buy the books? I guess I gotta buy the books, I guess. <laughs> so I bought the books for a while. And then at the second year, third year, is a total skate bike thing. And my biggest issue in law school was this. The Boston Herald is a uh, magazine format newspaper, you know what I mean? So I had to figure out how to do the, the Boston Herald, open it up like this, and I would have like one book on here so the professor couldn't tell I had the newspaper out. And then I'd have to, tur- I'd have to wait on him or her to turn their head, and I would turn the page like that. Yeah, yeah, that was like my biggest challenge in law school is how to turn the page of the Boston Herald. You know, you know, you know I, I've been trying to keep it light, but in all seriousness, yeah. I, I think my biggest challenge in law school was I had to teach myself how to actually study. Because, like you said, undergraduates skated by, and then when you get to law school, essentially everyone it has some, it, you know, is, is kind of smart, right? I mean, you, it depends on your definition of smart, but yeah. everyone, has, everyone knows how to use their brain, so you actually have to study to perform on, on the exams. But again, C student, trying to be rich. Um, <laughs> but I, I didn't know how to study. I got to law school, and I have, you know, I, my studying was, I'm going to read four chapters the night before the exam, Retain what I can, fill in the bubbles in undergrad, and move on. I mean, I went to Florida State, so, you know, you know it's, that is what it is. FSU, by the way. Talk about the talent up there at FSU. Pretty good, right? Yes. Well, the football team is... Uh, you, you know, know what I mean. Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Oh, well, well, so uh, there's, there's a whole argument about who has the Don't most make me beautiful... Hashtag it. Who has the more beautiful women, the Gators or the Seminoles? Gators. I'm 100% biased. So okay, Seminoles. go ahead. Uh, I hear Seminoles all the time. Mick, what do you hear? Down, down in the trenches, what do you hear? Kansas Jayhawks. Top <laughs> <laughs> Jayhawks. We're gonna my talk. School. A, we're, gonna, school. we're gonna talk a little bit more about commercial law. We're gonna talk more about what it's like to take that bar exam with Samuel Rita right on the other side of this break. My name is Justin Clark. Behind the law, Bud ninety four one. Alright. <laughs> we have some fun. Yeah. Why not? Damn! Don't hold back. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 I want to get you talking about the Orlando City. Oh, what is Orlando that? Orlando City, uh... What about what? it? They're losing every game. I know, but we always have fun when we go. <laughs> yeah, we do. That's why I like going. <laughs> they, I you know, know it's funny going. because the fans, they don't care if they win or yeah. lose. I think they just go party. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, care, dudes, I care if know. they win or lose, but sure. that's just because I am a rabid sports fan, so... He did the fan section. What is it, the fan section, where they do the whole... People get, like, ruckus. Yeah, I've, it, I've it gets there. crazy. Ruckus section. It's not like a mosh pit. But no, we know each other because I used to do personal injury. He was pretty hype. So I met Ali Marketing, and now we just hang out and go to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, brunch. Yay, brunch. I like brunch. Yay. Build those relationships. Yay.
<laughs> and I'm gonna win fifty bucks off her husband every year the rest of my life. Really? When does it start? Okay. This, this season. Starts. This season. <laughs> well, no, they don't play till the Saturday after Thanksgiving. All right, we ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. My name is Justin Clark. This is Behind the Law on Bud ninety four one. Allie Mack is here. Mick Dolan is here as well. Big day in the news today, Asia Argento, Me Too movement, accused of uh, raping, statutory rape, of a 17-year-old boy. Wally's shutting down, are you kidding me? What are we gonna do to save this? John Morgan says he's gonna save it. I don't know, what do you think? I started doing some signs, just I'm gonna start doing some kind of movement out there so we can bring it back. I don't know if really? I have to stay overnight there. Or something. No, I'm kidding, but. <laughs> I think somebody should do something. So my little cousin works for Chick-fil-A. He does like a rotating thing where he goes around when they open Chick-fil-A's up. Do you know people like camp out in front of Chick-fil-A's before they open? Have you ever That's heard this? That's a big deal, yeah. I mean this, certain places, fast wow. food restaurant. Have you been, when's the last time you've been to a Chick-fil-A during lunch? Last week. Yeah, and how long was the line? Well, well, no, it actually wasn't. It was long. long. Yeah. It was long, but they have people out there sort of like taking your order, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, good idea. I mean, I have mm -hmm. never met a business, and not open on Sundays either. Mm -hmm. no. The revenue this place must be making is absolutely incredible. I don't know what they're doing. But it, it, it just shows you that marketing, the like don't eat me, I'm a cow thing is fantastic, <laughs> right? On the billboards. Yeah. Marketing is great. Mm -hmm. But you have to admit. And I don't, I, I would never admit this on the radio, but since we're just talking, I'll tell you. <laughs> that chicken's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? That's what it is, absolutely. It is, it is. I like the no, no frills. It's it, just, it, 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 you know, you get your order some nuggets, you get yeah, the nuggets. Yeah, exactly. I, I want some chicken nuggets, I, I'll go to chick fil -A. And it's actually real chicken. Yeah, I don't, oh, allegedly, yeah. I don't know. Do you I, think it is? Well, I mean, yeah, I, don't I, don't I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what son, well, Both of my sons worked there for years. Really? Yeah. I didn't know, uh, come on, Mick, you gotta tell me more. They, what do they tell you? Give me some inside well, information. It's a good place to work. They don't make enough money, but they, it's a good place to work. And the guys, the, the management really does care. It, well, it's a franchise. It, it depends, but for the most part, they really care. We actually should have a Chick-fil-A person on here because it's not a franchise. It's a weird model. They like... They're franchises? No, it's, it's a franchise, but it's weird. They have someone who sort of runs the operation, but they don't own it, but they pay them like based on... It's a weird, weird oh. situation. They have a, a really good model going on there. My oh. sons used to dress up as the cow. <laughs> oh. Actually, they rotated those duties, so everybody got to be the cow. I thought all the managers were actually employees of the like big Chick-fil-A. It, so, it, it is something like that. So it's like, right. it's like I would go in and buy my franchise, and then the as part of the contract they give me a trained manager but we have to pay them it, it's definitely oh, something wow. like that actually it's a weird model Ooh. that they've just perfected it's unbelievable yeah. and that brings me to my next question actually samuel rita is here from the law offices of roman v hamas pa and i love roman by the way roman if you're listening or watching uh, you're a great guy uh, you can come on the show anytime as well three two one two eight two one zero five five more information about samuel where what? What's your information? Give me your phone oh, number. Oh, oh, my phone number, 407-650-0003. My email address, sam at romanvhamesh.com. And you, I know you do commercial law, so you represent businesses going through a tough time. They're getting sued. What do you think about these new instant loans for businesses? You heard about this? The, the, the cabbage or the, uh, we'll give you 25000 If you need the money and you can pay it back, it sounds like a... a Decent thing, but it's the seems like the ultimate ultimate capitalism, right? Like I'm gonna give these people money and they're gonna pay me back fifty percent, and you can have the money now. It just seems to, almost predatory, but purely capitalistic. It, it's borderline sort of we're gonna break your legs, you know, type of loan. It, it's very high interest. You've wow. heard, you, you've heard the commercials, cabbage, yeah, the square heard. loans. You've heard these commercials, the, the very very high interest rate loans for business owners. And I mute commercials, so I've never. Yeah. 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 And it becomes it sort of becomes like crack cocaine for business owners. I mean, they they just take it over. We have a, a lot of uh, subcontractors, and they you know for whatever reason aren't getting paid or they're um, a subcontractor and they have tried to bring someone in, they've tried to use someone else to supply labor and the people that are provided are not sufficient. So we deal with a lot of, of subcontractors and, all, and a whole array of issues. It just seems like it's endless. I could probably 
spend a whole two hours upon hours talking about it, but you guys would fall asleep. Uh, let's say that I hire a roofing contractor. They're going to do a, my roof, right? And then it, it, they, they're doing my roof because of an insurance claim. So, you know, a big windstorm came through, Hurricane Amber came through, and they do my roof, but then they say, oh, you know what? Your insurance company didn't pay enough. We're going to put a lien against your house. What can you do about that? Wow. Well, <laughs> again, it depends. Um, <laughs> it's just a standard answer, right? Yeah. Uh, you can, well, it depends on if they follow all of the statutory obligations that it takes to have a proper lien. Lots of liens that are filed um, against projects and houses are, they don't follow the requirements set out by the statute. So a lot of them are actually invalid. So those liens that are invalid, they still go through, though. Well, the judge okay then, you know, it's, it's a, you still, according to the, the customer, he's got to pay that money. Well, yeah, that's why the, that's why he hired the attorney, because then the attorney comes in and says, no, this lien is invalid for reasons X, Y, and Z, and it needs to be removed. But if you didn't challenge it, did it just go through? If you didn't challenge it, you'd never know. Wow. Orlando radio legend McDonald joins us as always, and one time you had to hire a lawyer. What was his name? And what was the issue? His last name was Lawless. <laughs> and what happened? Well, I had a condo mm -hmm. and tried to throw some people out. If they weren't paying. And so I went all through this. And yeah, he strung it out and strung it out. And I never got the money anyway. Then the next year, I see that he's indicted for some <laughs> kind of fraud. And it's like, gee, a lawyer named Lawless. There you go. Indicted for fraud nonetheless. Yeah, so. right. I mean, it's one of those things, like, if I could name my... Uh, change Clark to like badass or something I would do it but lawless I, I think I would probably change avoid that all together you, you know the way he's talking about lawyers it sounds like he doesn't like them <laughs> hey, well, no, who I does? love lawyers who does he likes me side, other than me uh, I don't know <laughs> well, who, I don't like him either half the time right <laughs> although I like Samuel Rita that's for sure what other kind of work do you guys do over there take me through a, a normal day for you oh uh, you want to go to sleep Come on. <laughs> no, okay, seriously. No, um, so let's go through, let, let's see, what, what, what did I do today? Yeah. Uh, I worked on, I responded. I woke up, put on a pink shirt. <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> I knew, well, you know what? I knew I was going to be on the radio. I, I knew it was one. Yeah, I wanted to look, I wanted to look nice. Yep, got it. And I, and I watched the last couple episodes and nobody had on a pink shirt. So I was like, I'm safe with the pink shirt, right? So you do stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. The, and Allie calls me out on the beard. She's like, oh, beard and a pink shirt. <laughs> Perfect combination, right? Uh, anyway, so, so today uh, I... I responded to discovery responses. Do we want to go through what discovery responses are? No. Okay. Well, I, I respond. <laughs> resp Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it's answers to questions, yeah. long story short. I, I answered questions, uh, well, our client answered questions, and then I made them look nice and sound nice. And then I went to a networking lunch, and then I came back, and I finalized a mortgage and a deed. I made some edits, and then... Next thing I know, it's time to leave, and I'm on I-4 running late coming here. So let's say that you're, uh, you're in the courtroom, right? So you're in front of the judge. Do you still feel, after doing this for so many years, do you still, still feel nerves, or do you feel totally comfortable? I feel nervous when it is an outcome-determinative proceeding. Explain what that means, please. If it is a proceeding... Because I don't know. I, yeah. it's not a, it's not, this is not a legal term. He's trying to say... I think what he's trying to say is... I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I, I'm either going to win or lose. I'm not sure. If, yeah. If, yeah, if it's a, if it's the last if it's the last part of the case, and I'm in front of the judge and my client's money is on the line, hell yeah, I feel nervous. But if it's a small proceeding, no, I'm totally comfortable. Can you describe how you generally feel about clients? So we're, we live in a day and age where no matter what kind of business you are, whether you're a radio station, McDonald's, whether you're a social media expert, Ali Mack, or whether you're a lawyer like me or like Samuel Rita, we're in a day and age where there are just some people that you deal with who are ir irrational. Mm -hmm. They just have unbelievable expectations and they're going to be mad at you no matter what. How do you deal with people like that? Well, at my first job, there was an old lawyer acro across the hallway and, and he stopped me one day and he said, let me tell you two things about the law. And he said, the first thing is, being a lawyer is a thankless job. And I looked at him and I'm like, cool story, old guy. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 clue, no, no clue what he meant. And he said, number two, no, no matter what happens, go home, 
and make sure your wife knows that you love her. Because sometimes she's going to think you love your job more than you love her. And at the end of the day, you're going to be by your side. So number two, picked up immediately. Number one is how I answer your question. It's a thankless job. And, I, and fortunately, someone told me that very, very, very early. I mean, I hadn't even... You know, I had my bar license put up six weeks, and an old guy who's been practicing for like 30 years tells me that. So, so a lot of times people will give me advice and say, at the, the beginning of January every year, you should fire your three most difficult clients. Have you ever practiced that? Wow. I have never fired a client. Wow. Have you, Justin? <laughs> it's so uh, hard for me because in this day and age, we have people who can, in, in, in two moments, can hit a button and put a negative review on Yelp or on Google yeah. or on Facebook and, I mean, essentially ruin your practice. You, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on advertising, but when people go and see your stuff, they're like, oh, this guy must be a real prick, which I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm obviously not. And go, how do you police that? I don't know. And, uh, you know, it happens to us maybe once every two years, but I always tell business owners, whether it's law or something else, is you're not a real business until you have some sort of negative review. That means you're really doing some volume. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are noticing. Very true. Exactly. More questions for Samuel Rita on the other side of this break. My name is Justin Clark. Bud, 1941. I'm curious about the kind of law that you go into. What is the most popular subset or, or you know what I'm saying? Your first job picks you. At least for me, it did. Yeah. I just did whatever I could get uh, whatever I could get hired doing it first. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, as a lawyer, when they go to school, did they <coughs> well, concentrate on a certain brand or a certain kind? Well, of school, uh, well, you can focus your electives <coughs> on a subject matter if you choose. Mm -hmm. I took all the easy electives because I just wanted to get out of there and graduate. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. Now, is going into personal injury versus corporate law is that different as far as? Well, a lot of personal injury is still a breach of contract. So the breach of handling breaches of contract still relates, but the way you handle the breach of contract is different. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> sure. Welcome back to the show. One more segment ahead of Behind the Law with Justin Clark and Allie Mac McDowell is here as well. We are talking to our good friend Samuel Rita of the law offices of. Roman V. Hamish PL. There Sorry, I was busy waving at the I camera. Really <laughs> trust me. People, I understand. So sure people who hear that on the radio are just going to be like, why did he pause? Uh, I'll never forget where I was sitting one day. He's a lawyer too, by the way, guys. We're talking about maybe some of you want to go to law school, or even your children are thinking about going to law school. Should we do it? Should we not do it? And then how do you really specialize in what area mm -hmm. of law? That's a question I get all the time. And You go to the doctor, right? You go to your primary care physician, and they sort of you know, check you out a little bit, but then if you have a broken knee, they're gonna send you to the ortho, mm -hmm. right? To the, that specialty. With law, we, we simply don't specialize. You don't go to law school for, for workers' comp, or you don't go to law school to be a personal injury lawyer. It sort of happens at so, the end so of the So you day. concentrate maybe on, on improving those after you get your law degree and after you... What I find, hired. what I find is most people <clears throat> sort of fall into whatever area they fall into. I, I'll never forget what's said. I think it was in my second year of law school, Boston Mass, the, uh, the gym we worked out at, right? And we played basketball on a Friday afternoon. We'd always meet at the restaurant. It was a very nice gym, at the Ritz-Carlton, actually. How I afford it, I have no idea. But we, we'd always have dinner with like the older lawyers at, after, uh, after the gym, at, at dinner. And they would always buy the drinks and everything. It was great. And I asked the guy, his name was John Dvorak. I said, John, like, how did you know that you wanted to go into immigration? He said, son, you don't know. You, you just do what you got to do, and you'll fall into it. I mean, there was no real spe specialization at that time. Samuel Rita, how did you end up doing bankruptcy and corporate law at this point? It fell into my lap. That, that, uh, this is how it works. I, right? I mean, uh, you, it's wow. not like something that you, everyone, every dude wants to be a sports agent, number one. We all go to law school. Yeah. We're, we're, we're right? all going to be a sports agent. <laughs> and yeah. then by like year three, we realize that that's not going to happen, and then we just fall into it, however we're going to make some money. How stop, have a stop crushing my dream. <laughs> Still dreaming for that. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Still want to be a sports agent. Yeah, um, yeah. Any, any, any uh, professional athletes out there looking for representation, we would love, we would go, love to represent you, Clark and Rita <laughs> agency, we're doing it. Never negotiated a contract, but, but we'll do so, it. Yeah. 
Two, two sharp guys here, we got it. All right, so how did it happen for you? Well, my first job, um, I actually was thinking about going to the state attorney's office. I interviewed there, and then I got set up uh, with my first employer through a friend and a, and a family member, friend, both, you know, same thing. Uh, and I got offered two jobs in two days, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I could either you know, do personal injury or I could go to the state attorney's office. So um, I did, pers I chose to do personal injury because it was closer to my house and it paid more than the state attorney's office. And then uh, where I am now, it just fell in my lap. Roman came to me, I've known Roman for many years prior to this and said, you know, my associate is, has left. Would you be interested in, in coming here and working for me? And this was over a beer and I thought he was, I, I thought he was kidding. I was like, dude, get out of here. I'm like, you're not being serious. And he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being really serious. So that's how my, that's how I got both my jobs. Um, I guess it's the old saying, it's about who you know. Yeah, always. McDonald, I have a question for you. I mean, this is Orlando radio legend McDonough. All the time, people will tell me, I don't, I don't mean that negatively towards you at all, by the way. I mean it like positively. Like everyone knows you. Every time we have someone come in, you know, as a guest, they're always like, oh, McDonald, I know you. And you, you started your career a while ago. I mean, how did you yeah, get into radio? Did you know? A while ago. Well, yeah, I, I'm not going <laughs> to use dates or anything. I'm not going to ask you what year you graduated high school or anything. But uh, well, as a kid, I, I was I always grew up listening to the radio. How did you get in? Well, did they have TVs when you were a kid? Oh, that's my yeah, yeah. okay. And for this <laughs> yeah. yes, they did. Uh, I, I just I, I listened black to and white. I listened to talk. <laughs> yes, it was black and white. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I listened to the radio all the time. As a kid, I'm like, man, I, I paid attention. They do the top 40 every week, and I, I listened to that. And then when I got to, I went to go to college, didn't have any idea what to do. And just kind of, the radio station at Kansas University, the little student station, did remotes at different dorms. They came to my dorm. And I said, man, I can do this. And that's how I got into it. I started at the student yeah. radio station. And your first real job, paid job, how did you get that? Well, uh, through, you know, just Kansas University, the, 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 there was a guy in, in Ottawa, Kansas, which is outside of KU, about 20 miles away, mm -hmm. a little pump town. One radio station, played country, rock, and <laughs> old, you know, Frank Sinatra. Everything, yeah. So they needed somebody part-time, so I, I did that on the side. And then when I graduated, I went to Topeka and spent what I feel like is a lifetime in Topeka because it was a year and a half. There was nothing to do. I was a single guy. There is nothing to do in Topeka. Great place to raise a family. So then, <laughs> so then, then I, I wanted to go to Kansas City because that's where I'm from. So I got lucky and, and you know just went on from there. So and it always beats working. There's never been a time when I worked. Uh, so the, the question lingers. Radio has changed so much over the last, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a decade or two decades, but we've gotten to the point where the, this conglomeration, mm -hmm. you know, one big media company buys every single station and they say, you know, years. I don't need you human. I can have a computer, run the show, or I'll have, you know, you can, you can come in at 9 a.m., I'll pay you for two hours, and you can pre-record your little break, mm -hmm. whatever, for the next five hours, and essentially dehumanized radio at a lot of places. Yeah. How, how did you deal with those changes? Not very well, actually. Uh, I was working at WDIZ, which is the rock station mm -hmm. here in Orlando. This was, they went away in 96. They were bought by what is now iHeart Radio. So JRR, our competition, bought us. Right. And they assimilated the stats. See, the way that works is consolidation. It gives them a chance. They got five radio stations. They only need one promotion director, maybe, or just a certain number of promo people and disc jockeys, and you know, because they wear different hats, so you save money that way. That's how they thought they were going to do it. Okay. Didn't work. It's not personal. And when it doesn't work like that, a lot of times the, the radio station will say, "Well, look, you can't go work somewhere else because you you've signed this non-compete." I want to ask Samuel Reed this question because I always hear the. the there's no non-compete in Florida, or there's not a strong non-compete law in Florida. You deal with corporations all the time. When you have a, a corporation come to you and say, look, I had this employee. It was my old disc jockey. He's now at JRR across the street, but he signed a non-compete. What are the non-compete laws in Florida? 
they exist. Cease and desist is real. That's what you'd have to do. That's what I would say. I would say, all right, well, let's send a cease and desist letter and try to get them to stop. So, and if they don't, well, then you sue them individually. And then, all right, so let, let's say I'm an employee. I'm a disc jockey. I, I am Mick Dolan uh, back in the day at, at JRR, for instance, okay? And I decide that, look, this is just not working out for me. I'm going to go across the street. I have a great job offer over at JBC. They're, they're going to take me in. I'm going to be the face of Bud 94.1. But it turns out when I hired, you know, signed my initial paperwork, when I first got hired at JRR, I hired, that I said I will not uh, join another radio station for three years after I either quit or you fire me. Is that enforceable? Do you think it's enforceable? It depends. Okay, <laughs> elaborate, please. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 are, what are the issues? Well, the first issue is, is it a valid non-compete, number one. Number two, did the person know what they were signing or was it just like a, hey, sign this because, you know, if, I know ig ignorance of the law is in their defense, so to speak, but if you don't know what you're signing, there an argument can be made that it's not a, that it's not valid if you don't know what you're entering into or contract wise. So do you think? Let, let's say we go in front of the judge. We, we're we're all the way through court. We're at a trial now on this, right? What what is a judge going to take into account? Like the length of the non compete, the the monetary value of I have to pay you if I non compete. Like what are the issues that are involved when you go in front of the jury yeah, or the judge? Because if this is your career and sure. they're blocking you from I'm trying to make money. I, I, I need a job. Working, it, it, does that also come into play if you go in front of a judge as far as like, you know, this is how I, this is how, how I provide for my family? Well, I, I think that he list, he stated the complexities. It, it would depend on the, it would depend on the contract. Sense. And in all honesty, I, I don't mean this in a self-promotional yeah. way at all. all right. But before you hire, before you consent to signing a non be hire an attorney. It, you know, it would be a relative. It would be a relatively cheap thing to review and advise on. It wouldn't. I mean, two hundred, two hundred and fifty bucks a half hour, an hour of time. It it just it, and it would save you a lot of trouble in the back end. In the days of radio, McDonald, you know, there were good days of radio, and then literally we turn it over to computers, right? So when you were fired or downsized from a station, how hard was it to get a new job? Depends on your age. As an older disc jockey that had been around a while, it mm -hmm. was it was tough. Yeah. When L, I, I worked at LLQ years ago, WLQ, and they went away. They were sold in 2011. After that, I mean, I thought, wow, man, I, I don't know where would I go. I mean, the rock stations wouldn't talk to me. Right. JRR wouldn't give me the time of day. I was too old. I would I, I would make too much money. They they would have to pay me more. And so I just thought, well, that's it. And then, uh, you know, a while back, uh, the good folks at JVC we called me up and said, yeah, hey, you want to do this? I'm we like, love Bud 94. We're, we're, look, we're a startup station, ladies and gentlemen. This is a startup station. We're actually exactly one year in, I believe, yep. right? There's right. no real rock station here. I mean, I would highly recommend listening to Bud 94.1. If you're a rock fan, there's no, there's nowhere else you should go. We're, we're bringing back the glory days. Rock radio. That's exactly. Do you play Glory Days? Is that on there? Actually, yes. <laughs> just, just checking. Yeah. I mean, it's. Can I hear your rendition of Glory Days? Please? Three, no. two, one, go. <laughs> it, no. It, it, you want to do it together? I'll do it with you. No, well, you you be doing the singing. I just, can't I'll, sing. I'll be doing the watch. That's why I went into law. If I can <laughs> sing. I can sing. Mick Dolan, if you had to choose Mick Dolan, this is Mick Dolan, the face of Bud ninety four one. Mick Dolan, if you had to set the peak of your career, that I'm at the absolute peak of my career, when was that? Uh, what station, what were Early you 80s, WDIZ, or I'm sorry, early 80s, WDIZ. Uh, we sort of just came on real heavy and, and just took the market by storm. And it was the best time. We were number one, and it wasn't just a certain demographic, it was number one 12 plus. You can't do that, a rock station, right. no station can do that. Right. What does that mean, 12 plus? Well, everybody 12 and older. Listen. Oh, okay. Age. So the entire gamut of your audience. And and that was, God, there was just no feeling like that. When you look back at life and, you know, life <clears> sinks <throat> and then it zags, it goes this way and that way, and you're like, how in the world did I end up here? Is there one moment in life that you wish it would have zigged but it zagged? Is there one regret <laughs> in your radio career that you really have? I, you know, I, I don't think so because it, it's just you, you take it as it comes. It's kind of like you were talking about being a lawyer. It's just 
whatever whatever, it, comes, that's what you're yeah, gonna land whatever they, they, they throw at you you just gotta react and I just wanted to be on the air I wanted to be an entertainer and pass along interesting important stuff and just it's like I'm sitting around a coffee table and I'm talking yeah. that's all it is Samuel Rita the law offices of Roman Hamus he's been here with us for the whole hour what do you think, man? What, how can we help people? What can you do for people who are listening right now? How can you help them? An individual? Or who should call you? <laughs> anyone, He's a lawyer. Anyone, anyone with a legal issue, please call me. Yes. And how do they reach out to you, Sam? Area code 407 650 0003. Good thing you said area code, because if you didn't say that, they would have had no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> right? Website? RomanVHamus.com. What kind of law do we practice against it? Bankruptcy and business litigation. We love small businesses. We love to help you guys. My yeah. name is Justin Clark. It's what it's all about. Hey, Justin, what kind of law do you do? Hey, you know, we do a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We, we, we're just trying to do radio here and inform the public as to what good lawyers are really out there. And, yeah. and Samuel Rita is definitely one of those lawyers and a great guest today, by the way. This was a lot of fun. Thank and, you for having me. And that is Allie Mack over there. Any sort of social media. If you if you are, are concerned about your social media advertising, I would absolutely reach out to Allie Mack. She's the best. The best social media expert there. A dime a dozen. They'll call you every day, left and right. Oh, we'll do your social media. Don't trust them. It, call, looks, it looks easy, Justin. And it's, but not. it's not. But it's call not. Call Allie <laughs> Mack before you hire anyone else. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Orlando radio legend, Mick Dolan. My name is Justin Clark. Mick, I don't know much, but I do know one little thing. What's that? I will see you right back here tomorrow on Bud 941. All right. Yay. Hey, what's <coughs> You're funny, man. Who, me? Well, <laughs> 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 I know.